Welcome to the first ever series on YouTube where we teach AI to do very, very questionable things. Today, we are robbing a bank. Um, it, it's just a simulation, okay? It's nothing serious. I definitely didn't initially try to find the blueprints of the Federal Reserve, replicate that in Blender, and deploy a reinforcement learning AI inside it so it learns to find the optimal way to steal money. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so we got three levels, okay? We got the parking lot, we got the reception, finally, we got the bank vault, which is kind of a mystery right now. Now, these levels are quite complex, so solving them is not going to be easy. And that is exactly why we got the low key. Now, Mr. Loki is an absolute Chad. He uses a neural network for his brain. He got complete 360 degree vision of his environment and of course he got six stacked vectors. Um, what the hell does this all even mean? Huh? Number one, neural networks. Now, what the f*** is this? You see, neural networks is an extremely retarded attempt at imitating the human brain. Wait, hold up. I, I don't think you heard me right there. At imitating the human brain, which means neural networks are retarded, dumb, they make mistakes, and of course, they got no big number two 360 degree vision imagine a lighthouse beaming light in a specific direction that lighthouse has a limited fov or field of vision meaning it can only illuminate a limited area in one direction that is a problem because if anything were to sneak behind the lighthouse it would go unnoticed so for complete security we need 360 degree vision and this is precisely how mr loki functions complete 360 vision number three stacked vectors this shit is precisely what makes loki so cool it serves as a short-term memory for our ai let's take a simplified example shall we let's say our ai is at a spatial coordinate of 0 1 couple frames later it's at 0 10. Since Loki has six stacked vectors, it essentially can remember its state several frames ago. So the AI has this spatial awareness that its coordinates have changed and that it has moved in a certain direction. It's no different than a human walking on the road and two seconds ago it was walking on the road so it's still on the road and it knows it's on the road because two seconds ago he was on the road if, if that makes sense algorithm now we are using an absolute chad algorithm called proximal policy optimization this algo is perfect for our complex environment in this algo the so-called agents learn through a series of rewards and penalties which should be present in the environment ladies and gentlemen it's worth noting in this particular simulation the brain of the ai will not be carried over between the levels instead the ai is going to be trained from scratch every single time this is due to the complex and unique nature of every level let's have a look at the parking lot shall we the goal here is for the ai to get from point a to point b in order to enter the bank and proceed to the next level the ai needs to collect the last coin near the main entrance however it's not necessary to collect every single coin the coins merely serve as a guidance leading the ai in a certain direction mr loki is rewarded every time he collects a coin now the the major antagonists in all of these levels are gonna be the police officers. Static in some locations, dynamic in others. Every time Loki collides with an officer, a penalty is given. Besides the officers, there is one other major antagonist. This new bank security system is called the giant minion standing outside the bank. And if Loki gets anywhere near this guy, just bringing him closer. Ah! 
Let's talk about the reward system in our simulation. All rewards in this Banky simulation are extrinsic. In machine learning, there is a concept of extrinsic and intrinsic rewards. Extrinsic rewards are rewards present in the external environment, like the coins in the parking lot. Intrinsic rewards, on the other hand, are akin to the concept of intrinsic motivation in humans. Intrinsic motivation is a term used to describe the incentive we feel to complete a task simply because we find it interesting or enjoyable. In context of reinforcement learning, this part is equal to curiosity and exploration. What does this mean practically? Today, if we were to use intrinsic rewarding mechanism in our simulation, there would be no need of coins. In fact, only the last coin near the main entrance needs to be present. You might ask why? Because now the AI is rewarded simply for exploration and curiosity. Thus, there is no need for external validation. The idea is that if the AI keeps exploring endlessly, for which the AI is rewarded intrinsically, he might eventually reach the main entrance and collide with the coin, earning a large reward. All this without any guidance by a series of coins. This sort of rewarding mechanism results in very arbitrary and interesting policies, which is a fancy word for the AI's behavior. The AI might learn to exploit the environment in many, many different ways simply because it has explored it all. But it's not all good news. Intrinsically rewarded simulation setups can take a giant, wait, scratch that, humongous, scratch that, galactic amount of training time. So unless you can wait an eternity, intrinsic rewards are simply not. Feasible. Now, don't get me wrong. By no means am I making broad generalizations here. There are specific environmental setups where intrinsic rewards will in fact train faster than external. But that's a topic for another day. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to talk about the elephant in the room. This section of the video is very, very important because if I were not to include it, the comment section will literally be on fire. Overfitting has been a major issue since the dawn of machine learning. In this bank simulation, there is a need of some sort of shuffling mechanism. The argument is that if the environment is precisely the same every single episode, the agent overfits and learns to take the same optimal path every single time. Meaning if a slight change were to be introduced into the environment, the agent would freak out. The best way to fix this, of course, is to have a completely procedurally generated setup every single run. But the question is, who the f*** is gonna code this shit? Hell, who's gonna wait godzillion years for the training to finish? The answer is very context dependent. You see, in our case, the more you try to decrease overfitting, the longer the training time. And training time is a variable highly dependent on computing power. If you have the computing power to run hundreds of training sessions in parallel, the training time will be manageable but this is a luxury i don't have so what do we do we find a sweet spot between overfitting and training time in my experimentation i had best results when the coordinates of the coins were shuffled this will ensure the ai doesn't follow the exact same path every single episode the coordinates of the agent itself is also shuffled every single episode if the ai reaches the main entrance and collides with the last coin it gains access to the reception the rewarding mechanism here is similar to the parking lot. However, there is an element of creativity here. Loki cannot scale those walls without learning to use the tables. All this while getting actively chased by our fellow officers. Everything sounded great and I ran the simulation. And within the first hour, let's just say we had some funny moments. This was an easy fix, but the other issue surprised me a lot. For absolutely no reason, Mr. Loki decided to randomly stick his head into the body of the truck. This was immediately followed by the coin above the truck disappearing. On closer inspection, it seemed that Loki had learned an exploit. Instead of jumping to get the coins, the AI learned that for a couple of frames, collider of the coin extends outside the mesh of the truck. Meaning if Loki simply stood beside the truck and waited, he could get the rewards without needing to jump. All these bugs fixed, it's finally time to run the simulation. Or if I may say, it is time for the ultimate AI bankist.
Mm-hmm.